These are not dead bodies. This is not a crime scene. These are businessmen passed out on the streets of Tokyo after a long day at the office. These photos were taken by documentary filmmaker Allegra Pacheco, who visited Japan for the first time in 2012 and was shocked to discover that this scene was not uncommon. I thought it would be really interesting to just circle, circle it. You, you circle things to raise awareness or to highlight something, right? To remember something. Pacheco wanted to know how someone can start their day at the office and end up sleeping in the street. So she followed these salarymen from when they left their jobs to the moment they passed out. What she found was that this was just a symptom of a much bigger problem in Japan. A culture of extreme overwork, oftentimes to the point of complete exhaustion and even death. Pacheco is far from the first person to point out the extreme and isolating lives of Japanese salarymen and women, or white-collar workers. The concept has been part of the conversation for decades and has appeared again and again in Japanese pop culture. In 2015, this video went viral of a Tokyo-based YouTuber chronicling his typical workday. 11.15. Leave work, 12 a.m., arrive home, 12.30, bedtime. This is, of course, supposed to be silly, but overwork in Japan is no joke. A recent government study found that nearly a quarter of workers logged more than 80 hours of overtime every month, and that one in five workers are at risk of death by overwork, either by stroke or heart attack or from stress-induced suicide. There's even a word for this in Japanese. Karoshi, which literally means overworked death. To find out why this is such a problem in Japan, we spoke to Thomas Loser, who teaches courses on Japanese culture at NYU. He says that widespread overwork really started after World War II, when the country switched its focus from strengthening its military to rebuilding its economy. The prime minister says we're going to have income doubling and 100% employment. And the idea then becomes, instead of the military and emperor is your family, the company is your family. You will do everything you can for your family. This actually worked in Japan for a while. The country experienced a so-called economic miracle from the 1960s to the 1980s, becoming the world's second largest economy after the US. But as the economy grew, so did the rate of Kuroshi. It really becomes a social problem and a social concept in the 1980s, right at the moment of pure success. People were really starting to question what success meant. We are at the forefront of the future, the forefront of a certain kind of global capitalism, etc. But it's leading to lives that make us kill ourselves even when we don't want to. Japan's economic bubble burst in the 1990s and the country has seen several recessions since. But oddly enough, the culture of overwork continued and in many ways became even more of a problem. Employment becomes much more intense. People are much more desperate than ever. There isn't the lifetime commitment to them anymore. So they're continuing to work very, very hard for fewer jobs with less certainty. So the discipline is there, the idea that you should be working and giving physically, mentally, everything that you've got. But the conditions that encourage or exacerbate that have changed and maybe in some ways become worse. Drinking became the mode of dealing with the pressure. They go to the bar and they drink a lot. And uh, it seems like they're uh, releasing their stress. But in fact, uh, drinking too much is uh, one of the big uh, reasons why they're so stressed. On Friday nights, the amount of salarymen sleeping on the sidewalks would triple. They, they basically leave from the bars and make their way slowly towards the subway. And a lot of them pass out along the way or, or in the actual subway entrance. Despite the fact that Kuroshi has persisted for decades, the Japanese government didn't really address the problem until last year. They were pressured to do so after a 24-year-old woman logged 105 hours of overtime wrote on social media that she was, quote, physically and mentally shattered, then jumped off a building to her death. In the wake of the tragedy, the government took action, but only capped overtime at 100 hours, an amount experts say still puts workers at risk. 
the, I guess the question of overtime is really what's at stake here. And in some ways, overtime is very definitely still a part of the economy. If you were really to do away with overtime and therefore do away with the problem of overwork, that would have real economic changes. Kiroshi is not just a Japanese problem. Work-induced deaths have been widely reported in China and South Korea, so much so that the countries have their own words for it. In the West, we call this burnout, but it's not as trivial as the term suggests. A 2014 study showed that a quarter of salaried workers in the U.S. regularly put in at least 60 hours a week. Japan is, is just a, a more extreme example of what's happening everywhere. Salarymen are, are in a way like a, a corporate soldier, but we're all headed in the same direction. Japan is just already there and in an extreme fashion.